Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sprima Connect. This is Fit On from Sprima HQ Technical Support Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'll be focusing on Biostar 2 new features for version 2.9.1 and 2.9.2. .2. Now, let's get started. Now, today's contents I've divided into five major parts. First, we'll be starting up with support third-party OSDP reader connection. Second, relocation of Biostar 2 license menu setting. Third, camera QR license. Fourth, improved face detection setting. And lastly, change in Biostar 2 login UI. Support third-party OSDP reader connection. Now, a lot of you might question what is OSDP? OSDP stands for Open Supervised Device Protocol. What's so beneficial about this feature is that it's interoperability. This means it has two-way communication. I'll further explain with the diagram below. Communication protocol based on RS-485 serial communications, encrypted communication as AES-128 when in secure channel mode. As you see in this diagram, we have access control and we have a reader via connected RS-485, which provides you with AES-128 increasing security value. Now you will see here in the access control part, the access control requests to the reader stating searching for a reader. And now the reader will be able to respond back. You see the two-way communication right here, located at RS-485 port number three. Uh, send me your OSDP ID. Each OSDP will have its own ID, and the reader here will be able to reply stating my ID is zero. Now, request, another request, new request. I found ID zero. Now send me your card data. As you know, the readers will either have pin pad or card number data. So in this example, we have my card data is 2580. Now the request is going to state card match data matches. Open the door and turn on green LED. Now the reader is going to open the door while the response from the reader is going to turn on green LED light. As you can see, it's gonna have two-way communication with a secure value. Now, updated OSDP feature. Now, what has made the change in iOS Prima 2.91? Now, before enhanced, when you were using controller and reader, both being Suprema product, it was available for you, as well as having a third-party access control unit as a master, having Suprema product as a slave mode. Now, the new feature is going to allow you to use Suprema product core station CS40 as a master, also allowing reader, slave, third-party OSDP reader is now available for you. Let me move on and tell you more in depth about this new feature. Now, supported third-party OSDP, uh, the CS40 core station supports 2.2 .2 of OSDP standard protocol, allowing third-party OSDP readers such as card and keypad to be used for authentication. Now, we do have a prerequisite, which means it's a requirement in order to use this feature. You need to be using Biostar 2 version 2.9.1 or above, also, check your core station version. It must be 1.6.1 or above. Lastly, the OSDP must be supporting 2.2 .2 of OSDP standard protocol. And most importantly, these features cannot be set up using core station setup manager. Right now, we have proven third-party OSDP reader by Suprema with HID and STID as listed in this chart below. Now, the CS40 core essentials, you must know these features in order for you to be able to apply. Now, maximum eight devices are connectable to one single core station. Each port support two devices with a daisy chain, and you cannot connect third-party OSDP readers as Screema or as 485 slave device, the same RS-485 port of core station. The specification for the maximum number of Suprema slave device supported by core station and the maximum number of third-party OSDP readers are not counted together. So you have to consider it as a separate count. Setting the SCP key. This is a very, very important feature that you must be taking precaution for. Let me tell you step-by-step. Step. So secure channel base key is a 16 byte long and it is issued for secure session. The SCB key must be set before adding an OSDP reader. 
If an already added device exists, you cannot change the SCB key. What this means is if you already have another device added and you have already set it up, you cannot make additional edits after on. If the manufacturer of the third-party OSDP reader uses a specific SCB key, you can set the same key with the OSDP reader in core station. If the SCB key does not match between core station and OSDP reader, you cannot connect to the device through secure session. Unencrypted communication is possible if you do not use secure session. Setting the SCB key, I'll have a short video clip to show you how by step by step using BioStar 2. Now, this section you can be finding in BioStar 2 device. As you can see, there is a whole entire section in Core Station where you need, must set up the SCB key. And by setting that and applying it, you'll be able to set the SCB key. Now, another important factor is the baud rate. Set the baud rate according to each third party OSDP reader. So, this feature, this baud rate information is not going to be given by Suprema, but you do have to check with your third party OSDP reader to make sure the baud rate for each port that is being used. Byte order. As you know, there's MSB byte order and LSB byte order, depending on which third party device you are using and how the byte reader has been set up can change the extreme value. As you can see, the hex data reverted byte order is going to give a total different information and in data. So this could be causing other issues. So please make sure and take precaution of this matter as well. Now, step-by-step -step guide setting up third party OSDP reader. Let me show you through. So we do have our core station CS40 right here. Uh, connected with RS-485 with our STID third-party OSDP reader. And now here on port 3, I have added HID third-party OSDP reader and set it up. I'm going to go into our BioStar 2, go to device, and now we're going to add the CS40. But like I said, before doing any of these setup, you should must have set up the SCB key in prior because you will not be able to add it as being shown in this video. We'll see that our master is blocked out because of the feature, because I've already added the devices before in hand. So you must set up third-party OSDP reader before adding devices, and you must check with your third-party about setting these up before in hand. We will not be able to assist any further information regarding to your third party system. Now you're gonna have a virtual ID and information to set it up. Uh, you're going to repeat these steps for each OSDP. And when it's successfully connected, you're gonna find this status and you'll be able to use this feature. Now, how to set up OSDP device and LED buzzer. Now you have all set up our core station as a master and you have OS third party OSDP readers. Now, instead of only sending data, you also want to find out how to set uh, LED or buzzer lights to those third party. So I'm going to show you how that could be done. The menu is in the same location within the device. You're gonna to go to OSDP device, LED and buzzer. We have three events. It states waiting input, auth success and auth fail. Now the waiting input simply means that the third party OSDP is waiting for a value such as card or pin value. And the mode you have for LED and buzzers are off, constant and blinking. For waiting input, the default value is going to be blinking set for you. In the example, you will be seeing how the duration can be set. For auth success, the default mode is going to be constant. So in the example here, I've set the bu buzzer to be beeping in duration for 200 milliseconds, off in 200 milliseconds. That means it's going to go on and off each for 200 seconds. And I have put the cycle value as three. So it's going to beep three times within those milliseconds on the third party OSDP after you apply these factors. Now, relocation of BioStar to license menu. I know a lot of you have already applied your license or you're trying to upgrade your license. It's going to be a little bit different from this 2.9.1 version. The license activation menu before as in 2.8.16 and below was set up in this way. 
you will have to go to setting and you went to server and then you found a license menu section where you'll be activating them. Uh, let's say if you do have TCP IP online network interaction, you'll be applying that activate license online. While if you don't, you'll be activating license offline. This feature is same in 2.9.1 version as well, but simply the location of it will be different. And you're going to get the licenses activated, issued to someone. And if you go to about, you'll be able to see which license has been activated to you. Now to our current version, 2.9.1 and above, our bio, you will be going to Biostar 2, log in. You're going to go to settings, but instead of going to server, there's a separate menu for you called license menu. You will be going there to activate the same procedure as in below. Now, camera QR license is a new feature that is going to be applicable for you from um, starting 2.9.1 and 2.9.2. Now, activating license for specific features on devices via Biostar 2. Now, here, what we're talking about, the specific feature is camera QR. Suprema has recently introduced a licensing system for using specific functions on some devices. Currently, the specific functions is restricted to camera QR feature. On X Station 2, firmware version 1.2.0 and above, and BioStation 3, firmware version 1.1.0 and above. Now, BioStation 3 will be used for facial recognition device with a camera QR license activated while for X station 2 will be fingerprints or a mobile recognition device. And the non-QR models such as DPB, ODPB, and APB, and OAPB will also support QR as well. Step one, for inquiries regarding license purchase, please get in touch with the place of purchase. If you're unsure whom to contact, please get in touch with your Suprema sales team through. Uh, I have inserted a link here, please directly contact your Suprema sales person. Uh, make sure to have the device model's name and the device serial number when you request for a device license. The device's serial number is written on the Biostar 2 server UI. It's a gray label plaque on the back of the device or on the box you receive when you purchase the device. Now, after you have all these licensing information, there are two ways. One is to apply via USB type strip directly to the device. That's the part I'm going to go through. After receiving the camera QR feature device license, you can apply directly to the device using USB or via Biostar 2. Now, this part, we're going to go to how to apply a device license via USB. Uh, you're going to save the license on the USB. This USB type needs to be C type in order to be connected to the device. Connect the USB to the device. Click the device menu icon on the left top. Then you're going to go to device menu, then license. At the top of it, you're going to click the plus icon on the bottom right and apply for the license. When the license is applied properly, you'll be able to see activated license in the device and see this camera QR showing up as a result. Now, how to apply it during using Biostar 2. Let's go through. So we're going to go to settings. We're going to go to license. We're going to go to device license. We're going to have the device license separately saved in certain folders of yours. Now, let me just explain each part differently. Now, normal simply means that it is activated properly. You have a device, it's connected to Biostar 2 properly, and it has a firmware version that can be applied using certain device license. Not activated means it's not applied to this particular device, as in it might not be X Station 2 or BioStation 3, or sometimes you might have a firmware version that does not apply device license. Disconnected means it's not connected to Biostar 2 server for PC, so you need to first apply it and make sure it's connected properly. Unregistered means the device has never ever been registered to Biostar 2 from the start. So you could see the status and make sure it's activated properly and you can click on activate to move on and use your camera QR license via Biostar 2. Now, improved face detection setting. 
Now, this feature is affected device is limited to Base Station F2 firmware version 2.1.1 and above. And in order to use this feature, you must be using Biostar 2 version 2.9.1 and above. Uh, the latest Prima facial recognition model, which is Biostation 3, has a new setting for face detection. For unification purpose and to offer user-friendly devices, we have applied the same concept to Face Station F2 firmware version 2.1.1 and above. And we'll all be offering the same settings for face detection as in Biostation 3. Though, please be aware there is an expected exception. Face Station F2 device itself will not be able to save the new settings. So for cases using a version lower than Biostar 2 version 2.9.1 with Base Station firmware version 2.1.1, even though the firmware version has its latest feature, the new settings made in Biostar 2 will not be applied as the device will have its default device. This is how it's set up in Biostar 2. You're going to go and click on the device and you're going to see this menu show up, face detect setting. Let me tell you what each menu means. Now, face detect setting menu, you will be able to set up the maximum head pose angle. It literally means how the head pose is tilting and all. The range is going to be 15 degrees to 90 degrees. The default value within the system will be 15. And you can set up every 15 degrees decrease or increase. Uh, detect distance means the distance between the device and the person standing in front for the authentication. It also applies. Uh, the range can be 30 centimeter to 130 centimeter. The default value will be set as 30 centimeter. And for setting unit, it could be changed to every 10 centimeter. The wide search on and off, the default value is off. Wide search means you'll be able to search the whole entire screen part, or you are gonna sense the one person in front as well. Now, change in Biostar to log in UI. We had a star with a different color setting up looking like this. Uh, we're gonna have a total new UI. This is our Biostar to official UI. So do not worry that you're at a wrong site or such. Please be aware that it's simply an uh, update and the design factor. And more importantly, starting from 2.9.2, we have improved security of login password vulnerabilities for brute face attack. And please be aware of that feature as well. Thank you everyone so much for your time. I uh, hope to see you all real soon. Thank you. Have a great one.